Howdy, I'm Bob Terry, and welcome to another free Western here on the internet brought to you by Wild West Toys. You can shop with Wild West Toys online at www.toyguntown.com. Get ready for another fantastic episode of Shotgun Slade starring Scott Brady. Scott Brady was in the Navy in World War II, and he was also a boxer, which probably helped him with some of his fight scenes in Shotgun Slade. Get ready for another wonderful episode, and we'll see you after the show. One more. I was hired the day before yesterday to deliver a package to the bank at Lodestone. A hundred dollars in expenses. Not good, not bad. I'm a detective. I take things as they come. The stage is making good time and that's all right with me. The sooner I get this job done and head for home, the better I like it. The one thing I didn't like was traveling by coach instead of by saddle. But I had definite instructions. Could have been the value they placed on the package in the carpet bag. Up till now, the trip's been dull. The girl's pretty enough, but she's not the friendly sort. The gent sticks to his knitting and hasn't said a dozen words to either of us since we left Denver. Sure. Yes, sir. My name's Slade, sir. I've got a little package for you here. A package for me? That's right. Yes, it's from Bill Wharton. He's at the Palace Hotel in Denver. Wharton? Hmm. You sure that's the name? That's right. Bill Wharton. Well, I've grubbed stake a lot of men in my day. I can't say the name registers. I've got it. Kind of a spry old fellow with a beard? Yes, that's right. That's him. He said it would be sort of a little surprise for you, but that's, uh, that it was the least that he could do after all you've done for him. You know, from the way he talked, it sounded like he'd struck it rich. Well, old Spanish box. Say, you know, you don't see many of them these days. It's locked, isn't it? Key? <laughs> you know, I, I feel like a kid on Christmas. <laughs> had chosen me as the messenger of death. A chill went through me as though I'd been touched from the grave.
Sir, maybe you've heard of me. You wouldn't be shotgun Slade from Denver. That's right. I'm Fred Hadley. Meet my deputy, Harry Gardner. Mr. Slade, that's Harry. a social visit, Mr. Slade? Hardly, Marshal. I was supposed to deliver a package to Luke Thatcher and... Oh, he's over in the bank. I saw him going about an hour ago. He hasn't come out. And he never will. What are you trying to say? He's dead. You better come over to the bank with me. The body's still in the office. Nothing's been touched. I'll fill you in on the way over. was open. It was gone. It was right here on the desk. And the carpet bag, too. My shotgun was in it. Well, now, hold everything, mister. You carry a shotgun and a carpet bag? That's right. It's a knockdown gun. Whoever stole the box must have taken the carpet bag, too. This kind of leaves you in the middle, don't it, Mr. Slade? Yeah. Hey, what do you know about Bill Wharton, the man who hired me? Bill? Really? I haven't seen him for years. He's been prospecting as long as I can remember. Never had any luck. Was there anyone out to get Thatcher? He didn't have an enemy in the world. That you know of, you mean? Luke Thatcher was one banker you couldn't help but like. He hated to foreclose a mortgage, loan money to saddle stiffs out of his own pocket, grub staked every desert rat that ever hit town. He was a soft touch. But I had nothing against him. I didn't want anything from him. I was here to make a delivery. You sure did. Grow up, will you? I never saw the man before today. Well, that's a point that's open to argument, mister. Mr. Thatcher just got back from Denver the day before yesterday. You could have seen him there. Now, what do you say to that? I say I was played for a fool. Someone wanted Thatcher dead, and they rigged this Spanish box to do it. They just needed somebody to deliver it. And I get elected. Now, but why you? That's what I'm going to find out. into the alley, quick thinking. Well, we're in the clear now. Don't be so sure. Until Slade's out of action, we're still living on dreams. Well, so far so good. We can only be sure they'll hold him. He won't talk his way out of this. I won't stop worrying. Not until that mine's in our name. When you get close to something that's richer than the Great Bonanza, there's plenty that can go wrong. You leave it to me. Where are you going? To the saloon. To listen to the talk. If they hold Slate, it's in the bag. If they turn him loose, I'll try something else. He killed Thatcher, and he's stuck with it. Yes, I know how a thing like this can hit a town. Friends of Luke Thatcher's are bound to be suspicious. An outsider being there when he was killed. Yeah, an outsider who brought in the murder weapon. Looks like I got a real sucker for a client this time. Me. Marshal, turn me loose and I give you my word that I won't leave town until I got all the answers. Just to make sure, let's put it this way. 
I'll fix it so she can't buy a horse or a ticket on the stage. If you got any notions about walking out, forget them. We'll keep tabs on you and you wouldn't get far. That's fair enough. I'd do the same thing for you if I were in your boots. Meantime, you can telegraph Bill Wharton and check my story. If he sent you here with a Spanish box, he ain't about to admit it. Yeah, but there's more to it than Bill Wharton. Otherwise, the Spanish box wouldn't have disappeared. Chances are the real killer's still right here in town. And if he is, he may get ideas. Like planting you next to Mr. Thatcher. You're a mind reader, mister. I'd appreciate the loan of a gun, Marshal. Sorry, mister. If you ever break, I can, but I like my job. Good luck, anyway. Thank you. Marshall came back to the bank with him. Now, oh, wait. You mean this stranger calmly rode into town and killed Luke? Yes, Mr. Conroy. I was working on my books. He spoke to me. Doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. No finer man than Luke Thatcher ever lived. And I'll always be beholden to him. He gave me a job, and I was way down on my luck. There's the man now. Murder don't bother some folks at all. Show please. Well, you ain't thinking straight, Jess. Serving a killer. This man you tell us about, Mr. Norris? Sure is. Well, you sweet talk the sheriff into turning you loose. But you ain't about to drink with us, mister. Well? Look, I've got no quarrel with you, cowboy. Only with old men like Thatcher, huh? <laughs> I'll throw you in the pokey if you don't take it easy. Well, you great at arresting innocent men, letting murderers walk the street. Since when are you the law, cowboy? If you don't do something pretty quick, Marshal, there's going to be a lynching. Right, boys? Yeah. 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 Listen to me. I'm wearing the star. I'll handle things my way. When I can't, you'll get notice. The Marshal's right. If Luke was here, he'd say the same. Now, come on, boys. The drinks are on me. All right. All right. All right. All right. Sorry about that, Marshal. He jumped me. Just steer clear of the saloon. We'll things simmer down. You keep your eyes open. I'm going to get that telegram off to Denver. Well, on the stage, he was surly, sort of mysterious. He didn't say much. But when he got here, he went straight to the bank like he couldn't wait to get the job done. How do you like that? It still doesn't make sense. He was with him when he died. Don't forget that. That's right, Mr. Conroy. Sure. Why did he go straight to the marshal and tell him? Why didn't he skip town? Because he's smart. If he'd run out, it'd be an admission of guilt. This way, he figures everyone will think the way you do. Maybe so. Slade's as free as a bird. The longer he's on the loose, the more liable he is to stumble on something. Well, it's just a question of time before the marshal has to lock him up. When he does that, Slade's goose is cooked. And while we wait for the marshal, someone else may get wise to the mine. Hal, you acted that the world were full of fools, and you were the only one with any sense. There's too much at stake. You've got to do something, and you've got to do it now. Well, what's it going to be? You're afraid. You're afraid of him. He's unarmed, a target for any friend of Thatcher's, and you're scared stiff of him. I'll show you. Uh -huh. 
I'm no closer to putting the pieces together than when I started. Because I can't find any pieces. Maybe it's because there's no apparent motive. If Bill Wharton held a grudge, Thatcher certainly didn't know about it. Every detective's bound to run into a case that just can't be solved. But I can't miss on this one. Because if I do, some upright citizen's going to drop a rope around my neck and pull it real tight. The man on the stage. If it had been the cowboy, it would have made some sense. But why should Hal Bates try to kill me? Suddenly, I felt as defenseless as a fish in a barrel. I was fair game for anyone who wanted me dead. You'll arrest him, Marshal, or I won't be responsible for what happens. All right, now, let's all calm down. Oh, let's string him up, Mr. Conroy, and save everybody a lot of trouble. Yeah. Well, it's just the man we're looking for. All right, Mr. Skyam. Hold the text before you get cut down in the crossfire. All right, Harry, get his gun. You, Slade, step away from the door. Oh, look, everybody. I don't like what's happening any better than you do. Throwing down on old friends don't set right, but I... You are good at making speeches, Marshal. I'll have your badge by morning, so help me. All right, Harry, lock him up. Over there, Slade. You mind telling me what the charge is, Marshal? I'm holding you in protective custody, and I hope for your sake this town comes to its senses. It was the longest night I'd ever spent. I didn't know when the hotheads would come storming the jail and string me up. There's that Bates again, inciting the men, stirring up trouble. I sure wish he'd mind his own business. Why should Hal Bates want me dead? If I knew, I might have the answer to the Spanish box. Even if he is behind all this, how could he have gotten into Thatcher's office without me seeing him? Someone had to be watching me, waiting for him to leave the bank, ready to grab the Spanish box in my carpet bag. Who? Oh, well, the mob's no better than his leader. They won't start anything until Conroy gets all steamed up and says so. Who's that? It's Sam. That telegram just came from Denver. Well, shove it out of the door. What's the talk around town, Sam? Really ugly, Marshal. I wouldn't want to be in his shoes, or yours either, when you come right down to it. If you're smart, you're going home until they get this job done. Harry. Go back to the office with Sam, see that he keeps his mouth shut. What does it say in the message? Just keep that old fool from talking, you hear? Slade, just got word from Denver. Bill Wharton's dead. Murdered the day before yesterday. That's the day you left. Murdered? Sending the U.S. Marshal from Denver to pick you up. What? Right here in black and white. Let me see that, Marshal. Here, read it yourself. All right, Marshal. Let's have those keys. They're out in the office. Stand back. You shot him. Probably killed the Marshal. He's tricky. I hate to have him do this to you, Marshal. <laughs> Are you all right? 
Marshal. He shot me. Where is he? Took off. Let's scatter and find him. <laughs> around here, boy. Come on, let's look on the other side of town. All I want is just two minutes with that joker. Just two short minutes. Suddenly it hit me. The missing clue. I ran into her when I left the bank. She could have lifted the Spanish box and my carpet bag. It could have been a trick, her and Bates being strangers. They got on the stage at Denver. They could have killed Bill Wharton and it adds up. It's the first thing that does. But why? What's the motive? Bates. What do you want? I want to know about two dead men, lady. I'll take this. You know, I got a hunch you know Bates real well. What were you doing? Running out on him? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you? I'm talking about this package that Bill Wharton gave me. I see it's still unopened. It's news to me. Where's the other bag, the one you took from the bank? Where is it? It's in the wardrobe. Now, two men died because of this package. Must be pretty valuable. What's in it? The sample of ore. Wharton struck it rich. Thatcher staked him years ago. Wharton never forgot it. With the ore, is a deed to the mine in both their names. So, with both men dead, all you had to do is tear up the old deed and file yourselves a claim, huh? Yes. Why can't we do business together, you and I, Mr. Slade? We could split the deed right down the middle. I uh, heard that you were fond of money. Did you? Well, you heard right. You know, it wouldn't be hard to like you. Only it might prove fatal. I'll take it. I'm warning you. Not one sound. Stay right there, Mr. Bates. your hat on. Better take a little walk over to the marshal's office. You too, beautiful. Get your things. Come on. I testified at the trial. Hal Bates was sentenced to be hanged. Marge got life imprisonment. Thank you very much. a beautiful woman. Oh, such a waste. Well, here I am again. Another stage, another girl, and a long trip to Denver. This could be a mighty lonesome trip without conversation. So I decided, well, nothing to lose. Well, that's the way she wants it. Maybe it's all for the best.
enjoyed Shotgun Slay, starring Scott Brady. You know, uh, it was a pretty popular show in its time, lasted a little while, and it must have been pretty popular because it was so popular that the television show Maverick decided to make fun of it. There's an episode of Maverick that they spoof Shotgun Slay and they make fun of this show. They also make fun of Gunsmoke and several other westerns. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you on down the trail. If you hadn't subscribed to our channel, please do. Please hit the subscribe button and it'll and then we'll let you know when we upload more westerns. Thank you very much. Have a great day.